Hello. I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, because I'm going to continue from where we stopped yesterday, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me right now in faith, expecting a miracle. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You see, you, you declare these words, you make this demand until you get used to it. Now, let me tell you something. God is expecting to hear your voice every day. And when you pray like this, you are testifying that you are depending on God. And you see, when every day you come to him, make demand. It's not just a thing we say. No, we believe what we say. And so when I ask God for my daily bread, truly, I'm expecting God to give me today's daily bread. So I'll be looking out for it. Brothers and sisters, we talk to a God that is alive and is real. We're not talking to a tree. So when I make my requisition on a daily basis, I receive answers on a daily basis. Now that's the truth about it. God made it so. For Jesus to say we should pray like this, he knows, surely he knows what he's talking about. He said, give us this day. He could have just said, give us our bread. But he said, give us this day. Then he called it our daily bread. That statement in itself lets you know that that prayer should be prayed on a daily basis. Praise God. Yeah, because heaven supplies. Now, God gave us an example in scriptures. The children of Israel were supplied manna and God said they must eat the manna that day. You see that now? So God knows exactly what he's doing. Praise God. So when we make this declaration, when we make this request, we're not just doing it because we want to do it. No, we do it because heaven operates in that way. Praise God. So expect a miracle today. Now then, yesterday I was sharing some things with you concerning demon spirits and evil spirits. And I told you where they came from. I told you. Now, they don't actually have a place that God has created for them. And because there is no place that God has created for them, they keep roaming the earth. Now, let me show you something to buttress that in scriptures. Turn your Bibles with me to Matthew. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Now, I want you to look at this in verse 20, 43. Matthew 12 and verse 43. It says, when the unclean spirit, the unclean spirit, same thing as evil spirits or demons, praise God. When, now this is Jesus speaking here. This is, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, take note now. Now he didn't say uh, when the unclean spirit is gone out. He, he specifically mentioned where the unclean spirit came out from, meaning unclean spirit leaves in men. So he says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he, the unclean spirit, walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Now take note of these words of Jesus. First of all, he said, when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, the unclean spirit goes through dry places seeking rest and it will not find. He didn't say if he doesn't find. No, he says he, he, he will not find. He says he will not find. Why won't he find? Because there is no place that has been created for them to rest. There is no resting place for such um, people. I told you yesterday. Now, these are the product of angelic beings and women. Now, why 
are the evil spirits. You see, because God did not plan for their, uh, God did not plan for angels to reproduce seed with women. There is no such plan. And because there is no such plan, that breed itself is strange in the sight of the Lord. And so when they die, like when normal living souls, normal people got God created, when they die, they have, they have resting place. Jesus gave us the story about Lazarus and the rich man. And he said when Lazarus died, angels came and carried him. See, angels came and carried him somewhere. And Jesus told us what transpired in that place. Even the wicked man was in a place. You see that now? But then in this case, Jesus said, unclean spirits, evil spirits, when they, I told you yesterday, because they were, these were human beings before. And now they've lost their bodies through death. And because they've lost their bodies, no resting place for them. So they keep roaming. And because they have been accustomed to living in a body, I want you to follow what I'm sharing with you. They seek to live in bodies. Now the Bible lets us know that one person can contain several demonic spirits. One human body. You remember the madman at Gadara that Jesus met and he spoke to Jesus and Jesus said, what is your name? He said, we are legion because we are many. And they, they requested that Jesus should cast them into the swine. And Jesus did so. And, and you see, they ran into all the whole um, head of swines and they all perished in the, in the, in the, in the, in the river. Now, do you think when those when those the swine perished in the river, do you think the demon spirits died with them? No, they didn't. Now, why did they all run mad? Because the swine couldn't contain the spirits that entered them. But you see, humans can carry spirits and look normal. But you see the challenge. They are not just there docile. They are there to take control of that human being. Now, I'm going to be sharing things with you. They are not strange. These are things that you deal with on a daily basis, but maybe you've not been aware of them and they've been, they've been spoiling your life and you don't know. Now, watch this, Jesus said. So when this spirit is, it goes from a man, it walks through dry places looking for rest, but it will not find. Why won't it find? Because there is no place created for it. Then what does it say? Look at the next verse. Then he said, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. So he called the human body a house. I will return unto my house from whence I came out. And when he is come and findeth it empty, I'm reading from the old King James now, findeth it empty, swept and garnished, then he go, then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse, is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Now, I want you to understand what Jesus is saying. Take note of how Jesus ended this statement. Say, this is how this wicked, this wicked generation will be. How will it be? Evil will keep multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. Now, that's what Jesus said. I didn't say it. See, notice he says, <laughs> thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, I was talking to someone one time and I said, when we concentrate a lot. Now we're talking about ministries who do an open show of casting out devils. So I said, look, when we make, uh, when we make this a focus, I'm, I'm going to share something with you now. When we make this a focus, how we enjoy so much casting out devils and we don't know the purpose, guess what we're going to be doing? If we don't teach people the truths, and teach them how to live in obedience to the Spirit of God. 
we are causing more damage to life and the earth. When we just think by casting out devils, we'll be fine. Because the devils you cast out, they don't have a place to go to. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, what happens, like Jesus said here, when he doesn't find, he says, hey, let me go back and check. Now, he comes back and finds that this body that it came out from is garnished, clean, swept, but empty. He says, look, I know what I'm going to do. Let me go get seven more wicked. Take note, seven more wicked. So I was in this place alone and they cast me out. Now I'm going to get seven more wicked spirits to come dwell with me so we'll be stronger. And Jesus said the state of the person is going to be worse than it was before. And Jesus said, this is how this wicked generation is. So you see evil moves from one level to the other. Why is that happening? I told you, most of the evil you see around you, they are caused by demon spirits. They are caused by demon spirits. So most times we stay and say, oh, oh our country is going to get better. Does God desire our country to get better? Yes, but our country is not going to get better if we don't take our position right. If our country is going to get better, then we, God's children, have to position ourselves right and function in the authority that God has given to us. Praise God. I want to read something to you again. The same Matthew chapter 12. Telling you why is it so important that we cast out devils. I told you that's the first thing Jesus said you will use to know that someone has believed. The first sign Jesus gave for the believer. He says, in my name, they will cast out devils. What was he referring to? In my, with my authority, they will cast out devils. Now, Jesus made a statement in same John, in Matthew chapter 12. And he said in verse 20, 28, yeah, Jesus said this in verse 28. He says, but if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Take note of that. Now, you know, they were accusing Jesus that, oh, you're casting out devils uh, by the spirit of... Let, let me read from verse... Okay, let me read from verse 25. Okay, 24. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow does not cast out devil, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? And then Jesus now made this statement. And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devil by the spirit of God. So Jesus is telling us here that we can we cast out devil by what? By the spirit of God. Now some translation you see by the finger of God. Actually it's referring to the spirit of God. So if I cast out devil by the spirit of God. Then it means the kingdom of God is come upon you. So Jesus here was saying one of the signs to know that the kingdom of God is here is when we begin to cast out devils by the Spirit of God. And that's what Jesus simply meant when he says, in my name, they will cast out devils. Notice, he said, this will happen after they have believed and they have been baptized. Now, of course, the baptism Jesus was referring to there was not water baptism. He was referring to the Holy Ghost baptism. So now you see that the Holy Ghost is involved in this so because of the infilling of the holy ghost because you are now born again by the spirit of god you have been given the authority to carry out this mission which is casting out devils and jesus said when you begin to do that then you know that the kingdom of god has come are you understanding what i'm saying so now we are 
in the kingdom of God. And what's, what are we doing? We are working to establish the kingdom of God here on earth, literally. Remember last month I spoke to you about the book of Revelation chapter 5 when the, the elders bowed down and they were worshipping and they said that, look, you have made us kings and priests unto our God and we shall reign on earth. How are we going to reign on earth? By the kingdom of God. Now, every devil will resist our reign. But guess what? They are not powerful enough to stop our reign. But when we don't understand what we are doing, when we don't understand what is going on, then ignorantly we will cede our rulership to even demon spirits. I told you, when Jesus spoke about casting out devils, it's not about running looking for where to cast out devils. I say start, start from the one that speaks to you. Now, they are not always inside a person. Like, see, there are demons we roaming around, but they want to interfere in everything. So you find that even people who are anointed by God's spirit can still hear devils speak to them. And when you're not knowledgeable, you can hear the devil speaking to you and you will think God is the one speaking to you. That's why we teach the knowledge of God. Because when you know God, you will understand his voice. So when you hear another voice, you'll be able to tell that, no, this is not the voice of God. This is a demon that is speaking to me. And then with boldness, because they get the behind me, Satan. I'm not sharing this truth with you so that you become scared and say, ah, I don't know. Pastor just says, yeah, demon spirit is everywhere. Now you want to sleep. You're wondering, is there a demon in this room? Is there? And you see, they, they have no authority over you. That's one thing you need to understand. I'm bringing this awareness to you so that you become conscious of your authority and begin to use it. Number two, I'm bringing this information to you so that you will not subject yourself to the influence of demonic spirits unknowingly. Remember, Jesus told us the thief does not come but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And he says, but I've come that they might have life and have it in abundance. Praise God. Now, Jesus made a, a very, very important statement. I want to show you Matthew chapter 7 and verse 22. From verse 21, Matthew chapter 7. Now take note of this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm just going to get in this, then we'll expand on it tomorrow. But, but let's, let's look at the scripture. Jesus said, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. He said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. Did you see that? So Jesus is saying, not everybody who actually cast out devils will actually enter into his kingdom. So he says, have we not prophesied in your name and in your name cast out devils? Jesus said, this sign shall follow them that believe in my name. They will cast out devils. But there is the other side of it. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that walk iniquity now take note of this it's not enough to say i can cast out devils that's what i was going to god desires fruits demons are there as our adversaries yes but you see beyond casting out devils god desires fruits now, it is because of the emptiness, because you're not bearing fruit, you open yourself to demonic influence, demonic attack. But if you're conscious about bearing fruit, I'm telling you the truth. Demons or no devil will find room in you. They can't, they can't find room to influence you. They can't find room to possess you. 
Praise God. So Jesus desires fruit, but we'll go into all this later on this week. But know this. We have been given authority to cast out devils. And as a believer, I told you yesterday, it says, this sign shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out devils. That word shall means you surely. So you are a believer. You are scared of casting out devils. We need to check if you really have believed. We need to check if you have the Holy Ghost in you. Because the Holy Ghost in you will stir you up against these things against what against every demonic influence operation that is around so if you've not got into that point ever when you're vexed in your spirit and you say come this thing is not normal there is a demonic influence and i'm going to deal with it now then you need to check your faith praise god my time is up <laughs> i pray for you right now Father, restore your boldness in the church. Bring forth your understanding again, Lord, that every child of yours will rise up in truth and begin to take their place and authority on the earth. So let it be, Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.